So uh, conventional mortgage rates for owner occupied uh, purchases or refinances have really hit uh, a, a low point. I can't say it's an all time low, but it, it's pretty low. You're still under 3% on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. I just saw some uh, rental property, long-term rental properties um, at right at three, three and a, uh, a quarter. That, that's unbelievable. So 15 year, 2.23%. That is unbelievably low. Let's talk about inflation. Uh, the CPI numbers came out. Uh, yesterday, which is the consumer price index, how much more we're paying for our, our goods and services um, year over year, uh, up 5.4%. So if you're wondering why your dollar isn't going as far as it used to, well, there's there's a key, 5% uh, up from, from last year. The producer price index, and this is going to uh, get you thinking about what's coming up. The producer price index went up 8.2%, uh, which means obviously that they're going to pass those costs on to the consumers uh, going forward. So it's not looking good unless they're going to eat 3% of this themselves, which most companies aren't going to. Some, some are, but uh, most aren't. First time unemployment claims came in under uh, 300,000. They were like uh, 200 and 60 something thousand, which is a, a pan, pre pandemic or post pandemic low. And then continuing claims 2.6 million, which is also a low. It, it's interesting though, that we still have 10 million open uh, employment uh, positions available. Yet we have 2.6 million people that are still on unemployment, which is a lot better than it was. Hopefully we can get some more people back into the workforce because that's, that's a big issue right now. Um, supply chains, we've got all these uh, vessels, all these cargo ships that are stuck at your big major ports floating off, you know, off the docks because they can't get uh, enough people to unload them. And then when they do get enough people to unload them, they don't have the trucks to carry them out to where they need to go. So, that's becoming an issue. You have Target, Walmart, a uh, few others have decided that they're going to charter their own ships, bring those in, but they're still going to have a problem with trucks. They're, unless they own their own trucks, uh, how are they going to get them to their store? So that's going to be an issue for a while. Uh, it's something that should have been addressed earlier on. Um, the, the problem with most government functions is they put these committees together to figure out how to do it. And then by the time they figure it out, uh, business has already done it. So um, I'm not bitter as you can tell, right? <laughs> um, I have a friend of mine in uh, collective genius that has been doing a weekly news for savvy real estate investors. He's been doing a, a, a little publication. It's like a, a electronic publication. Uh, Sheree, would you mind putting up the REI? Uh, there you go. So that's the link. And there's typically, you can get in there and subscribe for this thing. I highly recommend it. Uh, uh, Daniel is a, a I just call him a data geek. He loves data. So he's always looking at data and trying to figure out a way to put the data to work to work or find some kind of good use for it. And he's done that by compiling uh, different articles uh, that he searches and putting them together in a nice, uh, neat, uh, weekly electronic uh, newsletter for real estate investors. So for give you an example, uh, richest people in real estate. And then uh, another headline is a startup city, uh, Redfin uh, mortgage rates, uh, best places to flip. And then of course, something that all real investor, real estate investors want to know about are Crocs. Yes. The shoes. <laughs> I got a, 
I got to read this about the, or read to you this thing about the Crocs. Um, it is so funny. Um, of course, I'm not going to be able to do it now because my computer is not working great. But um, it, it, part of that article said that Crocs used to be a 100% guarantee uh, birth control because they were so ugly. Anybody that wore them uh, wasn't going to meet anyone from the opposite sex. <laughs> and now, now they're like a ten billion dollar industry. These these plastic Crocs. Uh, there's all kind of uh, different designs and Crocs that are coming out. Uh, but they have a, a good article in there about the uh, Forbes magazine that came out with the the richest people in real estate. Uh, I, a few of them are going to be household names like um, Warren Buffett. You know, he does a lot of real estate investing. Uh, the CEO of uh, BlackRock. Uh, most of them are fund uh, private placement and uh, publicly traded fund managers in real estate. A whole bunch of them are uh, people that are, are in the service industry, Home Depot, uh, a few others. But those, uh, that, that's going to be very interesting. They have a, a city in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Honduras uh, that is uh, some folks in Silicon Valley have put together. It's, uh, they, they call it a um, libertarian city uh, where government is there just to be what it's supposed to be. Safety roads, bridges, infrastructure, and then everything else, you're kind of on your own. We'll see how that goes. And then the best places to flip, um, fix and flip and, and the worst. So it's interesting that uh, North and South Carolina are on that list. So we have Raleigh, North Carolina and Columbia, South Carolina are two of the best places in the country. There was only like, uh, five or six that were listed in each category. Uh, Raleigh uh, was in there. And so was, like I said, Columbia, South Carolina for the best places to flip. What I found really surprising is a couple of the worst places to flip was uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee and Charleston, South Carolina. All of those are basically located in the same general vicinity, uh, but either uh, you can't buy these places at a low enough price to make it work. Um, or the market softening up. I, I'll have to do a little bit more research, but I suggest you guys subscribe to, to this uh, newsletter. Um, again, it's a weekly thing. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, some other data that I want to discuss with you as well is that uh, Zillow did a survey on home sellers trying to figure out uh, what was their motivation to sell? And 35% of uh, the people surveyed said it was working from home is what uh, motivated, motivated them to sell. And obviously, in my mind, it's, it's people that were in really high expensive areas that they could sell those homes and get a good profit for them and then move to a place that's going to be cheaper to live in if they were able to work from home. What was surprising is that the largest concentration of sellers were in the South. So 40, 41% of all sellers nationwide were in the South. Now, does that mean they were selling uh, because they want to move out? I think they're selling because their properties went up in value so, so much and that they're able to make a lateral move, still stay in the same place. And with low interest rates that we have, they're able to you know, buy a much bigger house with the money that they, what they made on that. So that, that's my opinion. Um, I'm sure everyone else has a different one. <laughs> um.